So at first I've got to say that I'm very happy to be here and at the same time I'm very sad to be here. <laughs> uh, because uh, I would never uh, imagine uh, why I was traveling when I was a young woman, uh, when I was traveling abroad, I, I would never imagine that I would come here in such situation, in such a role. And that Poland, which is my country, uh, would make such a step, I don't know where, because even not forward, because forward it was communism, and now we go to uh, a, a sort of uh, uh, Rad radical right-wing society, uh, which is governed by fears and uh, prejudices. Uh, so uh, I just met a friend of my youth here, uh, living here in the Netherlands, and I, I just thought to myself, where, where, where did it go? <laughs> How it could happen? Yes. Um, in May, uh, I would like to come back uh, a little bit uh, earlier because I am not so for such a long fighting for human rights. Uh, I was mobilized by the last election uh, in which uh, the party called Law and Justice, not having anything in common with Law and Justice, <laughs> uh, came to power in Poland. And uh, just before that, several months before that, uh, a chief of Polish Episcopal Conference, a chief of uh, the, the Polish uh, bishops, uh, 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 said some words during the sermon, and I would like to quote it. The state and the church are not two separate institutions which live side by side their own autonomous lives. These two institutions are inseparable, like a body and a soul. The church, if it is authentic, should be the soul of the state. Without spiritual values brought by the church, the state's body begins to die. So that was the declaration which was made before the last election. And uh, it's also important to add, perhaps, that during the same sermon, this archbishop condemned a ratification uh, of the Istanbul Convention on preventing and combating violence against women and against domestic violence, mainly to, due to a strong obsession, uh, which is uh, in Polish church, obsession of so-called gender ideology and LGBT plus ideology, whatever it is. Uh, I was uh, uh, searching for that for many, many months because I am also accused of spreading so-called LGBT ideology and I didn't find what it is. Uh, but uh, this uh, last election brought us uh, the soul of very close relation between the soul and the body, I mean the throne and the altar. And uh, it is often said in Poland that it is impossible to win any election without a sort of uh, donation towards the church. And uh, since uh, the freedom of Poland, I mean in 1989, I observed it that all the governments and all the parties used to make a sort of donation, especially uh, from women's rights. That was like in 1993 when uh, they established so-called compromise, uh, uh, which, is, which was, uh, truthfully speaking, anti-abortion bill. Uh, and this compromise was made not between the government uh, or the parliament and women organization, but between parliament, politicians, and the church. So, uh, in four years ago, uh, so-called law and uh, justice won election in Poland, which wouldn't happen, I think, without the huge help uh, of the Catholic Church. Um, so, uh, what happened later? Because it's, uh, there were a lot of changes in Polish bills, in Polish law, and in Polish everyday life, in terms of this uh, very strong alliance. Uh, but I would say about uh, the strongest moments, which always happen when we are before a election, when we are in electional year, which is uh, in Poland now. So, uh, in, the, uh, in April this year, uh, during the Easter time, uh, in a small city near Warsaw, something like 100 kilometers, there was the uh, Easter ceremonies, and... Uh, during the God's Friday, usually the priest parish uh, builds a sort of uh, a symbolic Christ grave. 
And this year it was built of cartons and uh, there were the names of common scenes and also crimes painted at that. And amongst uh, such crimes like theft or robbery and such scenes, I mean in a common sense like uh, betrayal, uh, we found uh, LGBT. Uh, because, uh, as I told you, that uh, this right-wing party always wins uh, uh, basing on some fears and prejudices, I would say, uh, and also the foreign uh, journalist said this, that the previous uh, winning of the election was because of uh, a sort of strengthening fears of uh, Islamic uh, immigrants towards Poland, which never happened because who'd like to come to the right-wing country? And <laughs> yes, and make their homes there. And uh, now uh, they were looking for some other scapegoat and they invented LGBT uh, people or LGDP, LGBT uh, ideology. So uh, when we saw this, uh, this LGBT in one line uh, with crimes, uh, we thought that it was a sort of call for lynch. Yes, because uh, if somebody is a criminal, you want to catch him and punish him, yes? So uh, we, in a group of three other women, uh, we are LGBT allies, we are not LGBT ourselves, we decided to go there by night. And uh, we placed around the city uh, something which we are accused about now, uh, the posters and stickers with uh, Holy Madonna. But uh, instead of the golden halo, we put uh, the rainbow. Uh, <laughs> yes, I also think that uh, she, she looks much nicer now. <laughs> and, <laughs> but uh, the next morning, uh, there was a huge rumor about that. And there was a woman who is uh, anti-abortionist and so on and so on. So she said, uh, she, she made this rumor because it was just before the European Parliament election. And uh, the uh, Minister of Inner Affairs, who is responsible for the police, said that that was the crime. So not the court, uh, but the minister. Uh, who is Catholic and who uh, emphasizes very strong that he's Catholic, and you can see him, uh, you know, on TV uh, while uh, ceremonies. He declared that it was a crime, it was a blasphemy, and uh, that this crime uh, will be haunted uh, uh, ex officio. Yeah, so not the private person would come and say, listen, this woman or whatever uh, offended my religious feelings, but uh, it would be uh, the state would run for us, and they did. Oh. Uh, so, uh, we were not hiding so much. Uh, I went to Brussels, and they knew very well about that, and then I went to Amsterdam, and uh, I came on Sunday at midnight, and at six o'clock, uh, the police knocked my door, and they came into my uh, apartment, and they searched it, and they searched my car, and then uh, they changed their mind, and they took me uh, to this uh, city of Płock. I was detained, uh, and I was to be put in jail for uh, 48 hours because this is what they could do without the prosecutor uh, charges. And uh, they detained me for several hours, and uh, I was released because uh, I managed to uh, inform my lawyer who came and who made a sort of... Uh, crisis uh, between officers uh, and they decided to leave me. But what was interesting, the same uh, minister of inner affairs uh, was tweeting all the time uh, that they caught this woman, this criminalist and so on, and congratulations to the police. So he's better than Trump. And uh, our uh, public policy is also Twitterized. And uh, um, when uh, this interest of uh, the head of the Ministry of Inner Affairs came to the local police, they said, okay, so we'll keep her in jail. Yeah? So we'll bring a sort of present to the minister. And luckily I was released, but as you tell, uh, it is the danger that I could be put uh, in jail for uh, two years. Uh, I don't know how it will happen because we are very quickly, we are six weeks ahead our national election. And I don't know whether my case would be used 
uh, as the example of who is the winner. Uh, because uh, uh, the files are not completed yet. Uh, two of my friends who, uh, with whom we made the section together came to the police and just uh, released that they, were, they took part in this. And uh, one of them uh, received official charges, the other not, not yet, uh, because they don't have proof for her. <laughs> and and uh, we are waiting for the court case. Meanwhile, uh, I uh, sued uh, uh, them, and uh, the local court said that I was half right. Now, it was not necessary to detain me. Uh, so I can uh, now ask for the financial compensation, which I will because I want to support a uh, transfusion organization which is helping trans people in Poland. So it is how it looks like, but just two days ago I have read uh, the letter of the bishops uh, and the letter asks uh, the police and the state, uh, and the state uh, to protect the church uh, against uh, attacks and crimes uh, such as uh, offending religious feelings, uh, and uh, to do some actions so that uh, the priests in Poland uh, could serve their mission. So I think that the bishops are quite disappointed yeah. and uh, uh, they just knocked the door of the state and I'll just punish them, punish her uh, because of the rainbow Madonna. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> This is some story. Um, it's and obvious. this is a secular country in the middle of Europe. It's, um, it's, it's, it's obvious that secularism is not only an issue in the Muslim world, but it's uh, becoming a universal issue.